When you got to the station, what happened? Um, I thought I was just going to be picking up my phone. I had, I mean, my car was there. I had everything in my car. It was just a regular, I'm just going to go in, maybe sign something and pick up my phone. And there's people that are um, over here at the windows, and I thought that I was supposed to go over there to get my phone. And Detective Lowen came down and um, said that my phone was upstairs. So if I would just follow him upstairs, that's where my phone was. And then I was taken into a, I guess it was an interrogation room, and they told me to sit down and that um, then I guess the interview or interrogation began, and I just simply kept getting my phone. Sarah. Tell the jury why. Yes. You may proceed. Ms. Ben. Ms. Ben. Tell the jury why you lied to the police. I lied to the police, basically everyone, because I was extremely fearful of being arrested. I made the first attempt of me calling 911 by telling them what happened, and I thought they, they were going to help me, but instead I was arrested for calling 911. So you made the decision to lie? I did. Did you stay with that lie? I did. Are you telling the truth today? I am. Now let me take you back to the... Um, <coughs> to this incident. Is it fair to say that when George Torres is sober, he commits no violence against you? No. Is that fair to say? Yes. Is it fair to say that every time that he's intoxicated or every time that you're hit by him or harmed by him, it's when he's intoxicated? Yes. As a result, when he's drinking, does it change your outlook? Yes. Could you explain that to the jury? I'm always fearful, um, paranoia. Why? I, Why? Because I try to protect and defend myself for fear something happens at the last ultimate second. But you're always that way, fearful. Is it because of these prior incidences? Absolutely. Do you try to placate it? All the time. What do you what do you mean? I with the puzzles and the painting and feeding the ducks across the way at the pond, uh, listening to music trying to go for a walk on the trail, anything that I possibly can. I told you I was running out of things to entertain him with. Why, why do you think, George, what, what, what bothers him? Sustained. Does he, does he tell you? What he Sustained. As a result of how he, he behaves towards you in that intoxicated state, how were you feeling the night of this event? Overall. Extremely nervous. Um, anxiety galore. Just, I can never relax. When he's drinking? Yes. And... The state of intoxication that he was at, at the time of this event, 
Is that the state that scares you the most? <clears throat> it's the tone, yes. There's a lot of alarms and red flags that go on throughout the day or night or whenever it is that we are drinking. Tell, tell us about tell us about that. How that heightens does that heighten your sense of safety? At all times. But especially when he's drinking? Oh yes, all the time. And then his mood? Yes, it depends on what mood he's in that day. Well do you have do you have like a sixth sense of how he's doing? Yes, I knew George very well. Um, Sustained. Can you tell us what you mean by that? Six cents or knew, knew him very well. I guess you can say that I was trained by fear with him. Just, it's it wasn't fun anymore when we would drink and we would uh, hang out on the back porch. It wasn't fun anymore because I knew inevitably that something was going to happen to me one way or another. You know, those, those bruises that we saw of him, they look pretty deep. Tell the jury what you were thinking. From the bat, you Yes. Thinking? I didn't want to die that night. I... I can't describe it to you. It's... Terrifying love to a certain degree where my plan was to show him the next day and just I I wanted him to be better and treat me nicer and be the person that he was when I originally met him and I knew that was in him still. I knew that it could be found and I just couldn't figure out what it was that I was doing wrong in order for it to not be back to where that was and I was tired of living in fear and just sick all the time of figuring out how I can entertain him so I don't die and uh, continue a relationship with my son and try to live a normal life. That wasn't a normal life for me. And just, I, I bottom line is I didn't want to die. I would, have, I would have died or I would have been disfigured or maimed or if, if it weren't me with a bat, it would have been him if he were to have gotten out. Any cross-examination? George knows somebody named Crystal. Did you ever mention Crystal in your text messages about being one of his bitches? I don't know. I don't remember. How about Christine? Did George know a Christine? How about a Pamela Erickson? These may have been people that he was communicating with on whatever the platform was. On your phone? I believe so, yes. And did you find these communications? I believe I found one or two of them from some of them. And did you send a long letter to his family uh, to relate to him about George and his girls that he was cheating on you with? I believe so. Okay, so you do, you do know those names, right? I don't remember them. It's been however long. Okay. Now, on February 24th, 2020, you called 911 at about 1 p.m., correct? Yes. And at that point, you were still feeling a little intoxicated, were you not? It was 
was more shock, yes. So you agree that you previously stated I was still, I believe, intoxicated to a degree? To a degree, yes. 